Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they've built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstar. So as you guys know, this is where we interview people that are just flat out crushing it in this business. And we show you the inside scoop as to how multifamily investors are creating massive success, not just in their businesses, but also in their lives. And I am super excited to welcome back uh, somebody who's been on the show previously, very proud of of uh, of this kid, uh, sorry to call you a kid, Eric, but uh, to me, you know, I'm I've got socks that have a decade on you. But uh, anyway, and also, of course, I've got the director of my massive action team for my warrior group, uh, Mark Nagy, on the call. But uh, we've got Eric Upchurch back on the show, and yes, yes. Eric is a former special operations veteran. Um, he's uh, he's in almost two thousand doors as a GP uh, in multifamily. He's got thirty one hundred self storage deals under contract. He's a high performer performance coach. He's a limited partner in almost 2,000 doors. Um, he, But most importantly, and I mean this sincerely, he's an incredible advocate for veterans, okay? He and I have had a show for veteran suicide. We've had a show for veterans homelessness, and he has raised tons of money and built homes for, for veterans. And uh, it's an honor to have you back on, my friend. Thank you so much, man. I love yeah. spending time with you, as you know, and I'm glad to be here to add value to the community. Absolutely. So, you know, um, because it's been quite, it's been a long time since you've been on, hasn't it? I should have looked at it. I think so. Up. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably been a couple of years by this point. Right, time, right. time flies though. I've known you for five right? years now. So, right. That's crazy. Um, well, um, to, you know, talk a little bit about you and uh, bring us current, you know, and, and, and yeah. maybe, maybe a little higher level than you might normally on a podcast because you've been on before, but, yeah. you know, give a little better background than I did, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, so one thing I've I've kind of discovered in my uh, so I I appreciate that you uh, you know you apologize for calling me a kid. I don't mind if you call me a kid. I'm a 42 year old kid at heart, and uh, I love kind of leading with that. That is totally fine. Um, so so at at 42 years old, I kind of I'm at a point where I know myself, and as a special operations veteran, and Mark and I were kind of joking before this, I identify as you know I said I identify as a multifamily investor. <laughs> You know, <laughs> tell yourself that, make that part of your uh, your affirmations. But for me now, at this point in my life, I identify uh, as a a giver, and raising money for the charity that I support is more impactful and more important than raising money for a real estate deal any day. And I think those are the type of people you attract very well, Rod. And it's a reflection of the warrior community, obviously, and the people that I do deals with uh, within your ecosystem as well. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, I, you know yeah, I have, no, I'm really glad you said that because yeah. you were one of our Hall of Fame members, okay, where at our Denver event, we 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 selected 10 exemplary warriors um, in the space. And I mean, we could have we could have selected 50, but oh, we yeah. selected 10 and and we did a slide for each one of them. And it was incredible that I noticed that every single one of them does something charitable, you know, maybe not to the degree that you do because you really live it, but I mean, building schools and, 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 and sexual trafficking and all these crazy things that we're dealing with today as a society. And it was just so cool to see that every single one of my super successful warriors was philanthropic. And that was just like, holy. And I, I told the crowd, there were 900 people there. I said, guys, this is a freaking clue. Okay. What you give, you get. So, um, uh, you know, and and you're a shining example of that, brother. And and uh, you know, you you know, I know you're. It's going to be great because we're having our Warrior Only event this weekend, and you're coming, and it'd be great to see you again. And and yep. uh, you know, we do that every couple times a year where we just all get the war. You know, some of the warriors together, and we go deep dives on you know analysis. And I'm doing a couple hours on raising capital because that seems to be the biggest thing people are worried about now. In fact, my book just got finished as well on raising capital. Oh, nice. uh, I, I got the rough draft today, uh, but. But anyway, um, yeah. So let's let's get into it. You know, you you've had you've had uh, you've fallen on your face a couple of times, and I remember when you first got started. And you know, let's let's have some fun and talk about some of the lessons that uh, fun you for you. Learned. Yeah, well, fun, yeah, really fun for me. I remember you calling, you know, freaking out because you were trying to raise, I don't know, it was a, I think it was only like a it million, million bucks. Yeah. It was a million <laughs> bucks, and you were like freaking. And I'm like, dude, you you got this. What did I say? I don't even remember. Keep calling. 
keep calling. Okay. <laughs> just keep on hammering the phones, you know, just okay. don't, don't quit. And I should know better because my unit credo, you know, is night stalkers don't quit. There is no quit. You have to believe you have to deliver your, um, your precious cargo, special right. operations forces, time on target, plus or minus 30 seconds. There is no fail. And so for me to take that, you know, get reinvigorated by you in this space and the multifamily space and go that, that completely correlates to this space. And now I'm telling other warriors to do the same thing. Like, okay, well, you got to close in three weeks. You got to close in a month, whatever it is. Your both your extensions are already exercised. You got, uh, you know, a quarter million hard, whatever your situation is, keep pushing, keep talking. Massive, massive, know? massive freaking action. Okay. Yeah. So Eric, you know, I know we talk about speed of implementation all the time at the events. And if I recall, you had an example of that. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, guys, you have to, you have to move quickly in this business. Sometimes, you know, I remember a couple of deals that we got because we moved literally in 24 hours and got them, got them done. Big deals that have made us a lot of money. So what is your, tell us your story about speed. Yeah. Of- I mean, uh, the easy, the easy thing here. Explanation uh, for speed of implementation for me. Uh, April of 2018 is when I stumbled across a, your boot camp um, in LA. It was your second boot camp, mm. my first. Didn't even know who you were, had no idea. So it was like drinking through a fire hose, and people I'm sure at events are doing the same thing and going, like, Holy cow, I didn't even know you could buy multifamily. I'd never even heard your podcast before. So wow. I sat down with your action team. And I, I wasn't sold at that point because I didn't know enough. I felt like I just needed a little bit more, but my, I knew enough to go to your next event. Also, I was like, there's something there and I want more and I deserve more. And I didn't think that I, and I was smart enough to know that Monday was going to roll around and I wasn't going to be able to do this stuff on my own. Mm. And so I went to your next event in Chicago three months mm. later, and I signed up for coaching and that hundred percent. It just made all the difference. If you look at anybody who's a professional athlete or a, you know, Olympian or whatever, do they have coaches? That's what I ask people all the damn time. Do, do like special operators, do we have coaches? Yeah. We've got some of the best coaches out there, the best military leaders out there. Can't do it on our own. You have to have somebody who's leading you that's been there already. And so I recognize that signed up for coaching closed almost 600 units in my first year. Mm, um, as, wow. as a coaching student, uh, within my first year and, you know, never looked back. So had I had now, if I had had that three months back, that would have been another, probably at this point, another two deals, you know, that we would be closing, which is good money and it's helping my investors out and it's, you know, all around great. So speed yeah. of implementation is critical. And sometimes you just have to take the damn leap and mm-hmm. trust the coach. You know, yeah. yeah. And guys, I don't care if you use me or not, but uh, let me tell you, we could be facing an incredible opportunity in this country. Uh, You know, people, some people are saying it's the greatest transfer of wealth in our lifetimes. Regardless, there's going to be deals. We're already seeing deals Uh, there. Things are really opening up. So, you know, just as of yesterday, Jerome Powell came out and said uh, inflation is not where we thought it was going to be. Interest rates are going to be higher than you might have originally expected. So they're actually going the other way. They're not even starting to pivot. They're actually saying, hey, this is actually maybe worse than what we thought it was going to be. The Fed chair just said this yesterday. Today's the 8th of March. Right. And Elon Musk said, if they don't lower the rates, this is a direct quote from a pretty freaking smart guy, said, (laughs) if they don't lower the rates immediately, we're going to have a severe recession. Well, Mm -hmm. there you go. So, you know, who knows if he's right or wrong, but I think it's going to be ugly. But with that said, there isn't going to be incredible opportunity if you get up to speed as fast as possible. So, you know, whether it's my boot camp or somebody else's, I don't care, but get up to speed as fast as you possibly can right now. Um, so anyway, yeah. yeah. And I want to ask you about network here as well, Eric, and, and then we'll get into maybe some of those specific deals that you've been sure. working on. Cause you go through the the group and I see you networking with people doing different deals with all kinds of people, obviously something you're really, really great at. How how have how has the community and other people, I guess, helped you do things faster with more speed versus if you were to try and go do this on your own by yourself? I'm not the smartest guy in the room ever. And 
so when I started this, I was like, well, I'm not going to be the greatest underwriter. Financial accounting isn't my bag. Uh, you you could, you couldn't you could pay me to stare at a spreadsheet all day. I, I don't like being behind a computer. I want to be in front of people and talk to people. I give a talk, um, and, I, and I've done this a few times for the Warrior Group, about networking like a pro and just being intentional about your networking and coming with a plan. And I implement that stuff that I teach at conferences because it matters. And when I make those connections in the warrior group, these are my peers. These aren't students. These aren't you know, like, you know, quote, quote unquote, coaching students. These are my peers. I only do deals at this point in my life with other people in the warrior ecosystem because I don't, they're professionals. They're not just coaching students that are getting started. There are some very serious operators in this community that can help me achieve my dreams and goals. And all I have to do is fit into one piece of the pie and being a connector who puts teams together and can raise capital and and can do some asset management and do all those things. That is value. And uh, I'm okay with that now. It took me a while to get there, (laughs) but I'm okay with it. You know, uh, our, our warriors own upwards of 150,000 doors. I mean, we're, we're trying to track that right now to really get an accurate count, but I mean, it's staggering. And most of those deals are done between warriors, which is why I started doing the warrior events so we could connect them. So we could help facilitate those connections because our most successful warriors by far are the ones that are the most connected inside the warrior community. So we do, you know, every other week at our Q and a calls, we do breakouts like speed dating after for our warrior events. And then we introduce new warriors to all the warriors that live in their state. And there's, you know, we're, we've got warriors in every corner of this country and, and internationally. And so we're trying to facilitate those connections because this business is a freaking team sport. And, and it's, it really is who, you know, I mean, I, I, t- I tell new warriors when they come on, it's, it's more important that you connect with other warriors than you, than you study. Honestly, those connections are more important than you're learning. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes they look at me kind of funny, but that's the truth of it. So um, so let me ask you this, uh, Eric, um, you know, you are incredibly motivated. You're incredibly driven. Uh, you know, you've got a beautiful family. What is what what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? What is the driver for you? Selfishness. <laughs> Please elaborate. Yes. Uh, so I serve with the memory and pride of those who've gone before me for they love to fight, fought to win and would rather die then quit. Hmm. So my motivation is uh, to serve my brothers and sisters who are no longer here. And that is something that will get me up out of bed and out of a funk anytime I need it to. Um, If I'm doing something challenging physically, that gets me through it. I just did a a half Ironman with no training in December. Wow. That got me through it. Um, So when I look at multifamily, there's nothing hard about multifamily. There's nothing hard about business. There's nothing hard about being an entrepreneur and making money and taking risks. Those are easy. What's hard right. is not being able anymore to feel those, to feel growing pains and to experience great relationships with other multifamily operators or whatever. So what motivates me selfishly, I serve for those who cannot and um, there is no greater motivation. Well, that's not selfish. I, I mean, and, and you know, I forgot to say thank you for your service. And for any of you that are in, in the military or even first responders that are listening, thank you for your service. We live in the greatest freaking country on earth because of you. Yeah. And, and, and I'm so grateful, uh, which is, you know, why this is such, you know, doing everything I can to help these causes is a big passion of mine as well. Not like you, obviously, not even close, but, but uh, it is, it is so important. Um, well, I, I say selfish, Rod, but I'm, I'll argue back that it is selfish with good. And I mean, a good result, the result is it helps other people and and, and it's great, but I do it selfishly t- for many reasons to keep myself out of my own head. I do it, um, you know, to, to make sure that I'm inspiring other people that are in my position to go and do things. And honestly, I get great feelings. It makes sure. me feel really it's, good. So all that stuff, it, it is a little bit selfish, but there's nothing bad about it when I say it kind of funny in a funny way, but there's nothing bad about me saying, you know, it's selfish because it it, it does make me feel good and it helps people along the way. So. Dude, it, stir, it stirred me, honestly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking what an incredible motivator for you. Uh, so, you know, it, it actually, I mean, it. I felt it when you said it. So appreciate it. That's good stuff. Well, cool. I wanted to dive into some projects that you're working on. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff, because I just saw it from one of your posts, the 72 unit uh, that you guys are building, I believe building another 72 units. Right. And I think 
you brought on a brand new warrior with construction experience to help you guys with that. T- yep. Tell us about that. Why, why the building was the, was the deal sold that way? Did you guys come up with that idea? How'd you build the team? Tell us, tell us kind of about the story. Cause we I don't know about that. What, yeah, as we I, don't hear yeah. a lot yeah. about deals that you buy and then build on top of them. We don't talk yeah. about that much on the podcast here. Well, so it all comes down to the team and I, I've been listening to Rod say um, how important it is to build a team for years now. And um, also to understand the story behind every deal. You got to do what others are not willing to do. I, I was like beat into my head from listening to Rod over the years, right? And so what one thing that I do well is listen and seek. And um, as a connector, I think, uh, you know, listening to fellow warriors saying, here's my problem, here's a solution. And I'm always looking for those that to be that connector of a problem to a solution. And so the way this one came around, it's in Wilmington, um, North Carolina, fantastic market. Uh, a, a fellow warrior lives there. He's a contractor there. He was building for a, um, uh, his name is Barry Coppage. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, he was working for a family office and built, you know, 3000 multifamily units for them and said, I'm done with this. I'm joining the Royal warrior program. I'm going to go build them myself. So he comes to me and says, Hey, I built this, these uh, 72 units in 2018. And it's, it's a stone's throw from the UNCW entrance mm-hmm. and um, it's fully occupied and they're newer units. And by the way, I know the seller still, he's a great friend of mine, been a friend of mine for 20 years. So we end up buying those 72 existing plus a two acre parcel next door that had two homes on it. We demolished the two homes um, and actually we just got building permits yesterday Wow. And so the pads are ready and we're building just a mirror image of the first 72 units. So it'll be 144 bed student housing um, uh, development. And um, we're going to have it uh, occupied in by August. So we're excited now, Steve, about that Steve's one. Steve's in on that one. Is, yeah, is Steve. The, yeah. And so here's, here's another connection point. Yeah. I was like, Barry, the only way I'm doing this deal is if we get a rock star um uh, operator who ha- understands student housing. And I knew that Steve, because I'm, I'm he's another Steve warrior. One of, he's been, yeah, Steve's another warrior been around a long time. And he Thank had you. done a wake forest yeah. student right. housing deal. And so I said, if, if, if Steve comes in on this deal, we will do this deal. And so I contacted right. Steve. And so just it's, it's us three as general partners on that deal. And it's uh fantastic wow. bought it for yeah. uh 5.2 million. And it just appraised uh, stabilized appraisal at 12 million. Nice, nice. Post construction, yeah. Post construction, right? yeah. That's, that's fantastic, double. right? Yeah. Now, I will, I will tell you, uh, you know, Steve is a great example, great warrior example, because he had a very high paying corporate job uh, that he retired from. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, because his income from multifamily had eclipsed, you yeah. know, his high paying job. And he was a coach for a while, and he's taking a year off now just to live life and enjoy himself. And by the way, guys, if you have an interest in the Warrior Program, you know, uh, there is no time like the present to check it out. To apply, what you do is you text the word CRUSH to 72345. And, uh, you know, would you agree, Eric, we can help them crush it in this business? Yeah. I mean, as long as they're coachable um, right. and, and and have the the will to win and the passion for it, 100%, anybody, literally anybody can do this. Anybody. Business. I am anybody. walking proof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so again, text the word CRUSH to 72345 uh, and, and we'll check you out. You check us out. And uh, man, I'm telling you, if there's ever a time it is right freaking now because opportunity is upon us. Uh, I've got more deals coming across my desk now than ever since, you know, literally in the last five years. And I'm not, I don't say that, I don't say that lightly at all. Um, so, yeah. So tell us about a time. I know I, we mentioned a video that you posted earlier that I thought was super interesting. Tell us about a time that you kind of made a mistake, maybe lost some money where if you knew beforehand that didn't, need to happen? What And what was the lesson learned there? Yeah. Well, uh, so I also theory. learned along the way not to spend money on, uh, on traveling to a, a property that you have under contract until it, until you have a PSA sign and you're actually out there for due diligence. Pur- purchase and sale contract. Yeah. That's purchase and sale until you have it actually under contract, not just the LOI, you know? Um, so 
Thankfully, we had another asset in this local so, market. Sorry, 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 sorry. An yeah. LOI is a letter of intent, guys. And what that is, is, you know, contracts, I, I will tell you, anytime you're doing a contract on a multifamily property, you will always use an attorney. Always, always, always. I've written thousands of contracts. I would never do one on a multifamily asset. So you always get an attorney. And attorneys cost money. So you start the process of negotiation with what's called a letter of intent or LOI. And that has all the major deal points on it. And, and, and to see whether or not the seller or the broker are interested, and then you spend money on an attorney. So anyway, please, Wait, please start you're not, over. Wait, you, you're not using chat GPT to write your contracts yet? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> That's you, funny. That's funny. Can, chat GPT it just is freaking reviewed. awesome. It is awesome, but yeah. but no. Always use a lawyer. Always <laughs> sorry, use sorry, a lawyer. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I don't know if we're there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Always yeah. use a lawyer. Um, okay, so- uh, oh yeah. So the 70, we got a 72 unit under contract. Um, this is in Indiana. We had another, we had an 80 unit nearby, uh, actually about 10 miles away. So we went there for due diligence. We had $50,000 deposit, you know, uh, was, let's just say 1% of the purchase price. We had 50 K down and we had, uh, about $20,000 in, in legal fees between the, the syndication fees. I'm just trying to keep this simple. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then the transactional fees, you know, for the attorney. And mm -hmm. then we had some inspection and appraisal fees. And so let's just say all in a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, now we went to the property and we found that they had not disclosed about $500,000 of drainage problems at the asset. Wow. And so we did back out. We, they, we tried to retrade. We tried to get them to uh, come down in price. In other words, yeah, retrading and, means renegotiate. Yeah, guys. and they okay. they would not um, mm -hmm. because they thought they could sell it for even more than we had previously negotiated. Uh, mm -hmm. But they did not disclose that there were problems. And the engineer that came out to give us a survey, a, a quick look at it, uh, actually brought plans from 2012 of them. You know, when they came out originally to solve the, to look at the problem. So uh, we backed out, and because we backed out, we got our earnest money back. That's fine. But we also had money in legal fees. So it's called risk capital or at-risk capital for a reason. You put that money up. And if you do not use, if you do not close the deal, that that money might, and I'll, I'll put an asterisk next to this, might be wasted. Now, if you have an attorney that might roll in some of those costs into your next deal, that's fantastic. Um, if you have a property management company that can roll in your due diligence you know, to the next property, if you buy one locally there, that's fantastic. Otherwise, that money's gone. And that's why we charge acquisition fees when we buy these deals, because we are invested um, with our investors as well. We have our own capital. Um, at least somebody on the team has their own capital in the deal as risk capital. So yeah, we've lost yeah, money yeah. that way. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you guys, sometimes the best deal is the one you don't do. Yeah. So, you know, the, the worst thing you can do is get into a bad deal and push forward on something you shouldn't push forward on. And it's a shame that that, that you ha you encountered a nefarious seller and they're out there. And so, yeah. you know, and and yeah, risk capital is there for a reason. They get, a, you know, whoever puts up that risk capital for the earnest money, the due diligence costs, these things you're talking about, gets a slice of the deal for doing that. But again, it is at risk. Uh, and uh and, that, uh, and that's why I, I don't mind doing that on, on deals right, um, because it right. gets me in, in more deals. It gives me an opportunity. I want my, I want my money to move, even if it's like using my HELOC on a right. short term, you know, risk capital play. Here's the key. I have to know, like, and trust that team even yeah. more than the deal. I have to know, like, and trust that team because the timeline matters. Are they going to be able to pull out and cancel that contract before my my EMD goes hard? You know, mm -hmm. those types of, of questions. So you really got to know who you're working for before the the what you're working on. Yep. Yep. Agree completely. So, you know, you know, we have a lot of aspiring multifamily investors on this show. They they yeah. they come on, they listen, they know they want more out of life. Maybe maybe they're they're comfortable, and maybe they're they have a good life, but they don't have a great life, and they know they want and deserve a great life, financial freedom, time freedom, you know, freedom to do whatever the hell they want, and but they haven't taken action because of fear or limiting beliefs or that comfort. You know, um, what might you say to those people that are listening? Um, that 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 fit that description. I'm gonna say you need to go get the life you deserve. You're here for a purpose, and this is. And the older I get, it's funny trying to explain this to my kids. Like, oh, life is short, and you hear your parents say it, and your grandparents told your parents, and it's like you've got one shot at this thing. Go do what you what you want to do, 
and live the life you deserve. And I'll, I'll say, if you're worried about that cushion, guys like Steve Breton, that we talked about a minute ago and myself, hold on to that W-2 as long as you can. Rod will agree with that because you can do multifamily on the side. I just, I just interviewed a guy 30 minutes ago that was a physician, critical care physician, full-time, two young kids, and he's already up to 1,100 doors. Right. Okay, so, so how many kids do you have, Eric? As I, well? I have, I have a, a full-time W-2. I own right. five companies in the military real estate investing space. Um, I have a wife of 18 years and two boys, and I never miss a night reading to them to put them to bed and uh, around 2,000 units and a lot more to come. So if I can do this, anybody can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, brother, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing you this weekend, man. Yeah, it's, I'm so glad you were able to pop on. I know how busy you are. Um, and uh, and yeah, well, thanks for coming on, brother. Absolutely. And, Eric, great chatting, right. guys. All right. So one other quick thing. We encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. But see, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years and they own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level. And honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345, or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now, again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply, and we will speak soon.